What's your favorite scary movie? Oh, come on, you know I don't watch that shit. Why not? Too scared? No, no, it's just, what's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. Hello! Hello. And welcome to episode... Twenty-eight. Sure. Hi. Hi. Katrin. How's it going? This is Kim and Kat Stay Alive, maybe. Maybe. We're a horror movie comedy podcast. So we're going to tell you about the entire goddamn movie, spoilers included, and make you laugh about it. And see who stays alive. (laughs) What's this Muppet voice that's coming out of me? (laughs) I think it's how I'm sitting. I'm kind of sunken back here. Cheers, Katrin. Cheers. Cheers to all of our listeners. Listeners. Cheers to you. Katrin. And Cheers you, to Kim. you. And thank you for all the great things that have been happening. Yeah. Lately. And thank you for Eric for doing absolutely everything, everything other than talk into the microphone. Cheers. Cheers to that. Mm. Mm. Well. What day is it today? What it's, day? What day are Kim and Kat talking? What is today? And what, today, <laughs> oh Lucas, what's <laughs> with today? Today, and what day is this coming out? It is after Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. It is post. Oh, it's Eric's birthday. Oh yeah, it's Eric's birthday. Well, not today, but soon. When you're listening tomorrow, uh, yeah, around the time <laughs> that you are listening to this is around the time that Eric Lane Porter Martin was born. I think tomorrow. Yeah. I'm so impressed that you know my husband's birthday. Well, He's the best. It's because in honor of that, I did a movie for him. <gasps> you did? I did. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Well, before we get into it, should we do some other stuff? Yeah, some other stuff. Let's see. Well, one thing that we would like to remind you all is we have a Patreon now. And if you sign up for our Kirsty Cotton tier then you get to vote in the poll that's up right now because Bernsey and I are going to do a St. Patty's Day themed episode oh you... look at the Irish do you oh, oh I almost went there and then I was like I'm going to embarrass myself I but Kim just went tried. for it <laughs> she just went for it I uh, took it off your hands we're Did it gonna for you. do a leprechaun movie and our Kirsty Cottons get to tell us which one tell we're gonna us which do. one or above or above yeah, so if you want to vote, go over to our Patreon at www.kimandcatstayalive.com and there's a link to our Patreon. Now that that's out of the way, do we have any reviews? I think we do. Oh my gosh, you guys are really coming correct with the reviews. <laughs> we are so appreciative. Our first one, I have the list today. Nice dreams. Nice dreams. Nice dreams are made, made of, of these. these. Who am I? Oh, I, I used to agree. No, you're you're our review person, and I took over. That was wrong of me. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to do now. Why now don't we I just have stick that with it? stuck in my head. All right, you ready? Nice dreams are made of these. <laughs> Who am I to disagree? You wrote a dream when they said thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, nice dreams. Thank you, nice dreams. (laughs) We also have Brian NYR. Brian NYR? Brianer. Brian. You're Brian or a Brian or a Brian. You're Brian or a Brian or a Brian. You're Brian or a Brian or a Brian. Thank you, you for Brian. No. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I mean, what? thank you, but also sorry. <laughs> yeah. I can't. All, guys, <laughs> these are just coming straight out of our head holes. Okay. Uh, There's no, uh, we don't even know what's going to come out. But thank you guys. Thank Write you so us much. We really appreciate five it. Five star. It super helps us out. It really does. So I, it's the, al- talk to iTunes. It's the algorithm. It's like an algorithm thing. Yeah. You know. Just help us with the algorithm. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so what did my husband make you watch? Okay. He gave me two movies, but then he was like, just watch the first one. And I was like, okay. <laughs> he knew he, it was wrong of him to try to make you have, make a decision. <laughs> And this one like had better 
seemed like it was better. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Like Rotten Tomatoes, I think it had more. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Basically, watching the preview of both of them, I was like, really? This one seems better. <laughs> Do I have to? But after you because... tell me what the movie is you watched, will you tell me what the one is you didn't watch? I will attempt to. Okay. <laughs> Slash ask Eric who's sitting because <laughs> I don't remember. Okay. I know it was by a famous horror director, and I want to say John Carpenter. Nah. nah. <clears throat> it was by Wes Craven. Wes Craven. Eric, Eric gave us the "You're idiots and wrong." It was sign. Wes Craven, and it was '80s, and this is '80s. It was uh, all very '80s. Mm, yeah, as we saw. So, well, yeah. We're on an 80s kick. It was The Serpent and the Rainbow. Oh, yeah. He's been trying to get me to watch that as well. It was... Uh, I well, haven't yet. On you, bud. Yeah. <laughs> so which one did you watch I watched then? Angel Heart. Angel Heart. Who's so, in that one? I will tell you. It was made in 1987. Okay. Do you... Who do you... How do you... Do you know anything about Mickey Rourke? I know that there was an ongoing joke about him in 30 Rock that I found very funny. That he was constantly trying to murder Jenna Maroney. Okay. And I know that he is a very good actor from The Wrestler, which is the thing right. that I saw him in, and that he got a lot of plastic surgery and now he looks like Silly Putty. That's what I know him from is like The Wrestler, but, and remember that people were like, oh, he's back kind of for that. But yes. like, I hadn't really like seen him when he was before. I saw like stills of him in movies that he was in. Well, I'm a fan. Are you? Let's just say... I'm a fan of 1987 Mickey Rourke. Really? I feel like I've seen pictures of him and people being like, he was so fucking hot. Yeah. And I'm like, I mean, he's fine. He's fine. Yeah, no, he's hot. Is it, is it, does, so he brings it in the moving pictures. Yes. Is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he's got a, a charisma, if For you will. sure. Okay. All right. So that's what For we're sure. working with. Yeah, I liked it. Oh, Kim so. is team... Mickey Rourke. For right, sure. Let's hear it. Let's start with Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive. <laughs> I promise we won't do that every time from now on. I can't promise I won't do that every time from now on. I will murder her if it happens every time. <laughs> so then it won't. <laughs> and I'll use my new ghost host. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to stick my golem on you. <laughs> okay. Harry Angel, played by... Mickey Rourke. My love, Mickey Rock. Oh, I'm telling Frank. I'm telling Skella Frank. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be pissed. <laughs> they're kind of, they're kind of, they're kind of like cute in the same way. Oh, bitch, you are a cheating fool. Skella Frank was just last I week not with Skella Frank. I, I didn't kill nobody for him. <laughs> He's not my, my, my husband. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> All right, who's next? You didn't say. Oh, dead, he's or, dead alive. or alive? Okay. Uh, he's alive. He's alive. He. You said he's alive. I did. <laughs> I yes, I said he's alive. <laughs> Louis Cipher, played by the one, the only Robert De Niro. <gasps> uh, you can't kill. You can't kill Robbie D. I'm saying alive. Epiphany Proudfoot, played by Lisa Bonet. <gasps> I don't want her to be dead, but I think she's dead. Margaret Cruzemark. Margaret Cruzemark. Dead. Old man Cruzemark. Mm. Dead. Toot sweet. Toot sweet? I don't want him to be dead. He's alive. Dr. Fowler. Alive. Alive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening to your brain as I say the words dead or alive? <laughs> I'm trying to, I yeah. I'm trying to <laughs> suss it out. I'm try <laughs> You're trying to Lewis cipher it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. Right. Angel heart. The credits start. Okay. And we hear a whisper. Johnny. It's nighttime. Okay. We're in a dark city alleyway there's a baby crying in the distance some guy kind of walking down the street 
There's snow in the streets. There's a dog kind of barking at a cat. And the camera kind of like follows the dog as he sniffs along. And bam! <laughs> there's a dead body. Oh, no! Then we hear saxophone music. And cut to daytime. So we don't know who the dead body is? Nope. Okay. New York, 1955. See? New York City. The and Big Apple, see? <laughs> and we see my darling Mickey baby. Oh my gosh. Walking down the street, smoking a cigarette. What's he wearing? I don't recall, but in my brain, he's always wearing like a wife beater. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Which I don't know if he wears at any point in this movie. <laughs> He literally never wears one, I bet. I bet he's like in a pea coat most of the time. <laughs> Kim's like, I mean, in this, I'm sure he's wearing a coat because it's outside of New York City. But he wears, yeah, he wears like, he's like a... Kim, what is he wearing? No clothes. He doesn't have a stitch on him. Not a yeah, stitch. I said tank top just to be nice. He's naked. <laughs> yeah. Totally uh, naked. All right, let's hear So it. we hear a phone ringing. Um, and it cuts to like an office like door and we see Harold R. Angel. Okay. It's kind of like a messy desk and it, we see him pick up the phone now. And it's someone from Wine Smap and... <laughs> Wine Smap and Burp Wine Smap. Smap. <laughs> Wine Smap. God damn it. Wine Smap and Macintosh. <laughs> it's not that. Wine Sap, I think, and Macintosh. Well, we'll call them it's, Wine Smap forever it, now. It's, it's Wine Smap and Burp Smap. Um, it's Burp Smap's attorney, Wine Smap and Macintosh <laughs> on the phone. So <sighs> it's attorneys on the phone. And Mickey is very New York and cute, which this is, I think, why I like him, too, because okay. he's very East Coasty New York. Sure. That's, that's your jam. He reminded me a little bit of like Bruce Willis-ish <laughs> in this part. <laughs> like is diehard Bruce yes. Willis-ish. Okay. I got, which is... That's why you think he's wearing a wife beater. It is. It 100% it is because I'm why. relating him to yep. that. Well, because I'll tell you maybe later the other person that I think he reminds me of. Okay. If it comes up later, remind me at the end if I've okay, never right, told right, you. Yeah. But that person always, always only just wears, wears wife a wife beater. <laughs> okay. You should stop using that term. It's so bad. I know, um, it's terrible. It's just what I've always grown up saying. I, I, I what don't do we know. call it? A tank top? But it's like when I hear tank top, I'm not... I'm picturing that's not the tank what I'm picturing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what what are we okay from this point forward kim and kat are probably going to have to refer to this type of clothing As. later on uh let's call it a a a wife respecter <laughs> <laughs> he's wearing he's a wearing wife a respecter. wife respecter <laughs> yeah he's wearing a wife respecter one of those sexy sexy wife respecters yeah, got it because respecting your wife is sexy as fuck yep all right. Anyway, yeah. That Oh, that's so right. That must be why mm -hmm. I think he's wearing that the whole time. That's mm -hmm. so funny. Okay. So, Burp Smaps attorneys are asking <laughs> him to come meet their other client. Oh. Louis Cipher. Okay. And they want him to come to Harlem to meet this dude. Okay. So, cut to him outside of what we think is maybe like a church of some sort, but like it doesn't seem like big Catholic church. Like, mm -hmm. decorate. we just hear someone preaching from the inside. It almost okay. seems just like kind of a more normal building looking okay. but but there's ladies outside kind of all dressed up and one's like crying and like kind of passing out and so I was like are we at a funeral like what's happening and Mickey does that thing where he like walks up the steps and he stops and like brushes his hair with like a comb that oh, little side my heavens um so then we're in the church and it's one of those like very like loud enthusiastic churches okay. kind of you know what I mean yes. more like maybe Baptist church or evangelical church yeah the, yeah that kind of direction okay. exactly and but it was funny because it's like the dude that was like he's like praise the lord and give me money da, 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 <laughs> something I was like okay so wine smap comes and gets a uh, Mickey baby okay and brings him upstairs they're walking by a room and see a lady cleaning up blood inside <gasps> of it oh my close the door lady and <laughs> you're cleaning up blood well wine smap was like oh um you know, a husband and Father John's flock took a gun to his head or something oh like that. Oh, my Lord. So, I know. So, I, I'm assuming that that's what the lady downstairs was like. Holy sad about. moly. Okay. So, now we cut to long fingernails <laughs> on a cane holding okay. a fancy, you know, like a fancy cane? Yeah, I do. And a hand. You know how the fingernails of today are those like kind of like almost pointy ones are in style talons 
they look like talons kind yes. of yeah yes um, like they come to a point as opposed to a rounded yeah, or a square yeah yeah yes. yeah yeah they're like that they're like long and kind of pointed not like so hard that you know what i mean like, sure, not sure. like a strong point but uh-huh. more pointed than not the and suggestion then, of a point <clears throat> yes okay on holding a fancy cane twisting it around okay scroll up to see they are connected to none other than robbie d oh oh robert de niro listen i have i have to i have to say something you can do whatever you want I don't care how you dress. I don't care who you love. I don't care about any of that. I want everyone to live their life. I personally am very upset by people who identify as male having long fingernails. I don't know why it really, really upsets me. And I just want them to cut Um, them. Well, you're a bad person. (laughs) It's true. I I mean, it's clearly meant to be upsetting because it is. Because I am upset. Yes. It's definitely based on societal norms, but... It's upsetting. It, it's yeah, and he's he's very like fancy. Okay, he's very like put together. He has like a big gold ring on, and just like like you know how he just fucking chills. Like yeah. he's just like fucking confident. He just gives What's no fucks up. So, this is Lewis Cipher, old Robbie D. He asks uh, Mickey for some ID, and he's kind of like looking through. He has a gun permit. We see at one point. Okay. Blah blah blah. Um, so they're kind of like sitting down, and Mickey's like, "Hey, how'd you hear about me? Phone book? That's how most people find me, you know. Last name's Angel. Starts with A. <laughs> Usually the first one they see. Call me up, you know. Da, da, da. <laughs> and <laughs> Robbie D's just like, no. Um, oh. Anyway, I'm looking for someone named Johnny Favorite. Okay. And he's like, you you probably did don't you know him. Did you ask me a dead or alive about Johnny Favorite? You did. No, no you didn't? Okay. No. So he's looking for Johnny Favorite. And he's like, you probably don't know him. He's an old crooner, kind of from like before your time. Like and a Frank Sinatra person? I guess Like so, that kind yeah. of singing? Is that what you're saying? He okay. said old crooner. Okay. Take that as you will. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. I think that means, I think Frank Sinatra was called a crooner. God, sounds right. <laughs> yeah. Let's say yes. Sure. Uh, his real name is Liebling. And Robbie D's like, I gave him help at the beginning of his career. And we had a contract that um, he would kind of forfeit some things over to me after his death. Mm-hmm. His and name was Lee Bling. Liebling is his last name. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was first name Lee, last name Bling. I was like, Bling, Lee Bling. (laughs) That's what I thought. Oh my God, I love it. All right, so Um, he had a, okay. Yeah, yeah. At some point throughout this, like, I don't know how Mickey's responding, but I clearly love it because I just heard, he, he, he's so cute. (laughs) And something about him being like, oh, I'm sorry, baby, sorry. Like, he's just like, oh my gosh, I am telling Skelefrank. Okay. Uh, Can I have both, Katrin? Yes, you can. Uh, oh, I'm just telling Skella Frank. No, I'm just letting him know <laughs> that he's got to step up his game, get some more skin, because Kim is yeah, looking. Yeah, I mean, how much skin does Skella Frank have at this yeah. moment? Because Mickey Baby's got all his skin. All of the skin, all right? <laughs> all right, so here we go. Anyway, so Mickey's kind of like, oh, is he dead? And Robbie's like, well, he was drafted for the war. He was hurt. He came back um, with amnesia. Like, he was kind of just like a shell of a person like like a zombie kind of so he went to some like psychiatric place where he got like radical treatment done and they said that um he was still a vegetable and he's just like i just want to find out if he's dead or alive okay you know just want to know if i'm getting the run around gotcha so mickey baby's like okay i'll check it out and robbie d just goes it's funny i have a feeling i met you before hmm hmm cut to Mickey baby on the road driving to Poughkeepsie and he's just kind of like wisp- whistling <laughs> whistling and chill <laughs> here's the thing Kim you call yourself out on it before I can even get to it <laughs> with your eyeballs it's great with my he's eyeballs he's whistling down the road <laughs> he's whistling down the road just chill but we're hearing kind of the exact combo like over again that he just had exactly okay of robert De Niro, like a voiceover like about johnny okay just like more of it like kind of again which is just kind of weird so he gets to the like clinic slash hospital and he's going through his wallet and it looks like he has all kinds of different ids in there so he pulls out Sneaky. the one from <laughs> from the health institute <laughs> oh, oh okay and he's like hey um 
you know, I'm here to talk to you. And, and the the front desk nurse lady is like, oh, you need an appointment. And so like us he, in college trying to get into a bar. <laughs> How old do you need us to be? <laughs> Which ID do you want? <laughs> also in college, he just um, turns on the charm a little bit. Ooh. Gets a little flirty flirty. Oh, my gosh. And People the, keep assigning the nurse, you movies that are <laughs> that. Ha- oh. Kim is now smoking a Sharpie <laughs> to symbolize a cigar slash cigarette. It was very sexy and sophisticated, everyone. <laughs> All right. So he turns on the charm to the, yeah, the, ho- and, the um, lady, hospital lady. And as he would have gotten me, he also gets her. And she's just like, hee hee, okay. Um, he's like, I just want to check to see like if a patient's still here. Okay. And she says, we did have a Liebling. He was transferred in December 1943. And he kind of looks at the file a little bit and he sees 123143 written on top of the page. And he's like, ha, huh, it's written in ballpoint. They didn't have ballpoint back then. <gasps> interesting. In- interesting. Ooh, that's, that's interesting. interesting. So in the file, he sees that there is a Dr. Fowler okay. that kind of signed a lot of the things there. And he's like, oh, does he still work here? And she says he's part time. He's kind of old now. So private investigator Ketrin yes question number one how do you find Dr. Fowler Hmm. we're in the 50s it's 1955 I am going to go to same way that Lewis Cipher found uh, Harry Angel the phone book yes Detective Ketrin. Correct. He goes to the old Yankee diner, gets on the payphone, and finds Albert Fowler in the phone booth. Okay. Book. Book. <laughs> Which is in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> it's nighttime. There's snow on the ground, and he is, seems to be now breaking into a house. Oh, oh, my. And it's kind of like the basement door that has a padlock on it, and he just like breaks it open and like goes into the basement. And then he's looking through the house, and it seems like kind of a bunch of regular stuff. And then he looks through something, and there's like a shit ton of needles, like uh, hospital needles, syringe kind of needles. needles. Yeah, not not knitting Sewing needles. needles. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, he's a doctor. But there was just like a whole box of like syringe okay. needles, kind of somewhere. And then he's looking through the bedroom, and in the underwear drawer is a gun. <gasps> he opens that. There's no bullets. Then he's going through some other stuff. He opens the fridge, and there's a shit ton of morphine in there. Oh. He's looking through there, and then all of a sudden, click, click, click. <gasps> Someone's coming home. Oh, no. Question two. What do you do, and what does Mickey Baby do? What do I do? What do I do? All right, Mickey. No, what do I do? I am going to hide and assess who is coming in and make a further decision at that point. I think Mickey just gives him a little, hey, what's up? And relies on the element of surprise to remain the alpha in the situation. Mm hmm. And you said you are going to hide. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to kind of do like a hiding observation type thing. Try to get out the door and then come and knock on the door again now that I know he's home. Okay. Yay, doubling! So Mickey just sits down at the kitchen table. <laughs> And the guy opens the door into the kitchen, doesn't even like turn the light on, goes like directly to the fridge. <gasps> and Mickey go- just goes, time for a fix. Uh Oh, and they kind of find out that he's a private detective. And he's like, I mean, I know you won't call the cops on me because of your little opium you den in there. Fridge of morphine. Right. Yeah. So he starts telling that he wants info about Johnny. And the doctor's kind of like, bah, 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 I don't know. And, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I tuned out for a second. What's the doctor like? <laughs> oh, bah, 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 I don't know. Uh, he says, uh, you know, he was transferred to the VA hospital up in Albany. Oh, because he's a veteran from the war. Right. Right, right, right. Okay. And Mickey's like, I checked. That was a fake transfer. <gasps> and he's like, I mean, I did that quickly because um, visitors started uh, coming recently. And he hadn't had a visitor in 20 years. And he's, Mickey's like, where is he now? And the doctor says he doesn't know. 
Mickey starts getting a little, a little tough. I'm suspicious. He got, starts putting his little tough guy on a little bit. The Ooh. doctors and Kim's the doctor's sweating. It. So is Kim. The doctors. <laughs> Kim's sweating. The doctor's sweating. The doctor really needs his morphine. <laughs> Kim really needs her Mickey. <laughs> and <laughs> and he's just like, let's come on, like let's fucking get on with this. Like, tell me what really happened. And he's like, look. The doctor says some people came. He got into the car with them, and I never saw him again. But Mickey was okay. like, I thought he was a vegetable. Right. Also, like, I know it's 1950, but I don't think a hospital patient can just be like, all right, bye-bye. Like, well, okay. At first, he was in a coma. He recovered from the coma, so he wasn't really a vegetable anymore. He just had amnesia. Mm-hmm. So he still didn't really know who he was. Mm-hmm. And Mickey asks who the friends were. They said their name were Edward Kelly and a young lady, and they were taking him home, quote unquote, down south. Okay. And they gave the doctor $25,000 to, <laughs> to say he's write, still there. Uh, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, seems like you can do yep, that. You can do that. I Especially $25,000 in, in that, that time, time was four bajillion dollars. Million? Yeah. yeah. So apparently Johnny's face was still kind of like in bandages all the way until he left so he didn't really know what he looked like or something one thing he said is that Edward Kelly had a southern accent but he just like doesn't really remember anything else right because he was also high on morphine so well Mickey's like still kind of like believes that there's more you know what I mean like he's like you're not fucking telling me any everything so he's like all right doc let's go upstairs and take take a little lie down so he brings him up to his bedroom and then locks him inside there And Mickey is like, I'm going to go get a cheeseburger. He's like, when I come back, you'll tell me what I want to know. And then I'll give you your goodies. Uh, I'm like, okay, sir. All right. You want information from a drug addict. You take so, the drugs. Mickey Baby's walking the street. And we kind of start hearing like a heart pounding sound. Mm-hmm. Like. Okay. Like over everything. And we hear a little whisper. Johnny. Okay. And then we hear Mickey. Oh, oh no. Or Harry. <laughs> but we'll call him Mickey. Uh, no! <laughs> <laughs> so, and then like a kind of cut to like, uh, he's maybe work, walking by like a church where like the door weirdly opens and he peeks in and there's just like creepy nuns reading the Bible. Oh, no. And it's just like, boom, 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 boom. it's just like very like weird. Ominous. Cuts. It's like ominous. Yeah. It's yeah. very like, what the fuck's going on? So now he's like chilling at a diner, spends some time there, comes back, grabs the morphine, starts walking up the steps. He's like, hey, I brought you back something. He unlocks the door. Dead body. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor's the doctor dead body? is dead on the bed. How, 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 how's he, how's he dead? It looks like, I couldn't tell you, it's like a bloody eye. And I was like, did he stab himself in the eye? Oh, like, I was so it's not like a, like a needle in his arm. No. Oh, it's no. like a. It was definitely like an eye wound oh, through the head. Oh, no. And he's laying on the bed holding a picture. The okay. one that was like, had been on like his nightstand. of okay. Maybe like a woman or something. And Mickey walks in, takes out a match and lights it on the doctor's shoe. And what? then lights a cigarette. <laughs> Can you do that? I don't know. Maybe I, old timey matches could be lit on things. More I feel like easily. I try to light a match on the designated the box itself. and it still breaks, <laughs> or I can't do it. So maybe I don't know. Maybe nineteen fifties matches were stronger in different ways. Because I, I feel like I've seen that in movies, but it's like, why would that even be a thing in movie or TV if it wasn't something you could actually do? I, I don't, be, well, I don't know, but I know that every time I've seen it in a movie, I go, oh, come on. Like, I'm just like, you can't, I don't know, maybe there is. Maybe it's like hard metal matches or something. We'll look it up. Okay. We'll figure it out. Um, I don't know, but he just fucking lights it on his shoe and lights a cigarette well because like, he's mickey baby okay baby you know you do you baby <laughs> whatever you want see <laughs> and then we see he has a, the the doctor has a gun in his hand and i was like oh so he like shot, shot himself. himself okay and then on the other side of him is a bible so mickey picks up the bible mm-hmm. and he opens it and it turns out it's one of those like box kind of books okay does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> that you keep remotes in. Yes. Uh, 
Sure. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, you keep remotes in there, Ketrin. <laughs> what did the doctor keep in there? This is question number three. What's so, inside the box? What's in the box? Okay, so my first thought was going to be that he keeps drugs in there, mm-hmm. but he keeps his drugs in the fridge, mm-hmm. and he keeps his needles in his needle box. So what does he keep in this? Se- he he doesn't feel the need to hide all the things I would need to hide. So what does he actually feel he needs to hide? Is it, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say somebody's name. Like, is there a clue to another person on it? But I don't know what that clue would be. Incorrect. Okay. Inside the box are bullets. Oh. oh. For the, the gun, gun that we already thought was empty. So he could shoot himself. Oh. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. All right. So Mickey grabs like a handkerchief or cloth or something and starts wiping everything off, like the gun that he had touched and uh, like everything okay. in the house. He just like wipes it all down, wipes down the gun. Oh, because um, Mickey everything his fingerprints had have found, been on. Mickey had found some stuff before he got home. He had like found a gun yeah, and some like needles and stuff. Dug That's, through everything. Like yes. at first, he went and like wiped everything down. Got it. And pieced out. Got it. Okay. So cut to daytime. He's, I don't know, kind of just back walking down the street, chatting with like some neighbor girl. He goes to an, uh, a restaurant that's completely empty, except for our friend, Robbie D. <gasps> and all I nails. wrote was, nails! nails! Exclamation point, exclamation point. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, I don't um, like it. So they sit down at a table and... Mickey's starting to tell Robbie D the info that he had so far found out about Johnny. And while all of this is happening, Robbie D is like, has some hard boiled eggs in front of him. Sure. I wrote something that him holding one just looks like a hand model with his beautiful <laughs> manicured nails. And Kim would know. <laughs> and he, he starts weirdly kind of rub it. You know how you like kind of like rub a hard boiled egg, to like this, roll it the to, to start opening it up? Yeah. So he's doing that and he's like, you know, you know the thing about slugs? And he starts rolling and he's what? like, they always leave slime in their trails. Uh oh. And he just is like creepily slowly opening this hard boiled egg. Oh no. And he just I can't says, wait to see what Robbie D looks like. Uh, this this whole scene you should just watch. Yeah. And he's like, you'll find him. And uh, Mickey's like, no, because I didn't tell you the last part. What's Dr. Part? Fowler's dead. Oh, right. right, right, right. Robbie D just goes, did you kill him? Oh, <laughs> no, sir. And he's like, no, but the cops might think I did, bro. <laughs> and he's like, I'm on this fucking missing persons job for $125 a day. Like, now I'm a murder suspect. Yeah. Like, I'm out, dude. Bye. Bye. And Robbie D's just like, oh, are you afraid? Yes, dude. Okay. I'll have my lawyer give you $5,000. I'll have him send it over right now. Cool. Great. Bye. <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> so Mickey's kind of like, Ugh. oh, $5,000 to keep going. Yeah. Uh, okay. He's like, I mean, okay. that's much more than $125 a day. That is, yes. Robbie offers an egg. Oh, delicious. May I have some old bay on that, to, please? M- no. <laughs> offers an egg to old mickey baby and mickey's like no thanks i i got a thing about chickens <laughs> <laughs> and he just is holding that his now unwrapped hard-boiled egg sure on de shelled de shelled and he says you know that an egg is the symbol of the soul okay and then he slowly takes a bite of it <gasps> stop biting my soul in a really creepy stare you in the face while eating something way <laughs> oh. oh no <laughs> So Mickey Baby is back at like that church place now that we were at before. He kind of peeks in that room where the blood stain was and it's all cleaned up. Okay. We're back in that first meeting room and he appears to be alone. And inside is one of those like stained glass windows. It's like a the window of a door, of a closet door basically is mm-hmm. like a stained glass kind of looking thing. Okay. And he opens it and there's like a dead like stuffed rat in there. Oh, like a uh, uh, taxidermy rat. Taxidermy, yeah. Okay. Cut to outside. There's a, seems to be a parade in the street. It feels like very 
I don't know. It felt like almost like New Orleans style, okay. but it was like. But we're still in. We're still in New, New York, York right now. Okay. But they're like singing, and now I'm like, is this the funeral? <laughs> and I think it's the same church people because they're like carrying Father John on like one of those oh. uh, king chair sort of things. Does that make sense? But he's dead. No, Father John is the the preacher. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. When you said funeral, and then you said they're carrying him. Okay, I got it. Got the it. guy who probably killed himself. Okay. The, yeah. One of Father John's flock. Got it. Okay. I'm assuming all of these things. Sure. It's just as it's unclear, but I was like, is this what's happening? Right. But they're strangely carrying Father John in like a king's chair. Okay. Which is interesting. Strange. Then Mickey is like kind of looking through in this room, like there's all kinds of weird shit, like eyeballs and candles and like taxidermy things. And it's what? like, I'm like, it's almost like very like voodoo like. Are you allowed like to just like weird. keep a jar of eyeballs? I don't think so. I, 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 Katrin. I don't think so. People have a lot of things in their home that you're probably not allowed to have. That's true. That's like, true. It's like, what are you talking about? Are you allowed to do that? Am I allowed? I, Is yeah. that allowed? Do you, think, do you think I'm allowed to have that? That's true. I don't know, Katrin. I don't know. All right. Well, so we have jar Live of eyeballs. Live a little. I'm getting you eyeballs for I'm your birthday. I'm getting a jar of eyeballs. Okay. And it's just going to say, live a little. <laughs> <laughs> all right back to dun, 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 Ooh, heartbeat. Dun, dun, heartbeat and then it kind of like starts again going to like like a montage i don't know it's hard creep? to tell what's happening so now it's like mickey baby's like down back into the more church area and he sees someone sitting at the very front it's all empty but someone completely dressed in black and it's like he's slow walking up to that person he reaches out his hand and bam <laughs> Two guys grab him and punch him in the gut and like throw him against the wall. Oh no. He kind of starts fighting them. He runs out the building and out the back, he's jumping some fences. The guys are chasing him. And then he starts running through the funeral in the streets and knocks over people. They like drop Father John. And because of all that commotion, he like gets away. Okay. But I don't know what the fuck's going on. Okay. He gets to a bar and inside there's a lady waiting for him. Ooh. He walks in and gives her a kiss. <gasps> And she has, like, a big manila envelope for him. Okay. Turns out she works at the Times. Okay. So, cut to them in a bedroom. Uh-huh. And they are simultaneously undressing. Uh-huh. And kissing while she talks, like, gives info about Johnny Favorite. Oh. So, she's taking her payment in peen. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Oh, what? <laughs> 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 She's taking her payment in pain. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm gonna move on. I don't know. I don't have a response. So she, I basically, it's distracting though, because she's just like giving all these facts about Johnny and the band that he was in. Uh huh. She found out about like his old band and stuff like that, and where all the bandmates are now. But like, we're getting undressed, and I'm distracted. And she's like, I can't multitask I'm in this like, way. <sighs> Hello. Yeah. And how's, uh, this, how's 1987 uh, Mickey work body? What type? What what kind of body are we working with here? <laughs> Is it like Marlon Brando and Streetcar Named Desire? That's the other person that I was. <laughs> that are you was really? My other, yeah. Where it's like toned, but it's not yeah. like uh, like I have a I have a Hollywood trainer in today's time. Yeah. sort of perfectly it's my chiseled kind of body. The Marlon Just Brando like body, naturally cut and toned. Yeah, that's nice, but not like too bulky and big. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm excited for pictures. Marlon Brando, also I. He has a wife respecter shirt oh on. Oh my god, he wears a wife respecter too. <laughs> Stella, what is with the wife respecter? That's why right. I'm like now unclear as to what Mickey Rourke wears in <laughs> Angel Heart, but it's probably just a suit the whole it's, time. It's, <laughs> he has like a, a suit and a private coat and this s- <laughs> snow pants, <laughs> scarf, hat. <laughs> so we're talking about the bandmates. We're kissing. We're taking clothes off. You know, she says something about like. Oh, one of them was married to some lady who cast spells. They called her the Witch of Wellesley. And there's just a bunch of facts, 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 undressing, kissing. How is he retaining this information? And at the end, he kind of, or, you know, he's kind of starting to sum it up because I had missed so much of it that I was like, okay, I'm glad he's saying this. He's like, (laughs) so I got 
a religious loony for a client. Okay. He's like, I got to find Johnny. 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 <laughs> I got to find Johnny Golden Tonsils. Oh, okay. That's a long nickname. Okay. He's like, I've got a geriatric band leader up in Harlem. Okay. And then I've got a guitar player called Toot Sweet. Okay. What Which I else? Think, I think means hurry up in French. Something along yeah, those lines. Yeah, Toot Sweet. Toot Sweet. Um, what else do I got? Or no? Are yeah. you asking me? And then question four, what else does he have in this moment? What else does he have? Like, are you talking about names that we have? Mm -mm. I, that was in your wine glass. I don't know what that was. If that was a <laughs> mm -mm or a mm-hmm. No. Okay. What else does he have? Uh... He has a. Give me a clue. I, I if I give you a clue, you'll know it. Like you'll immediately know it. Maybe not. What? Maybe not. I've been giving the clue this entire time. He has. I I don't know. What does he have? He's like, what else I got? And she says, a hard on. Ah! <laughs> Good one. <laughs> good one <laughs> kim's like me too <laughs> same <laughs> been there so cut to so now it's like flashes of things and it's like dum, 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 dum. and a flash of um kind of people getting back from war and the the kiss you know the, the picture mm -hmm. of the kiss where it's like the guy getting home and like kissing the nurse or whatever yeah. like um, dipping her yeah. yeah so it's like kind of like that scenes from that kind of thing mm -hmm. dum, 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 dum. the door closes dum, you do dum, a really dum, good dum. heart sound <laughs> the a door closes an apartment building we kind of see the outside of it one window is lit up with a red light okay dum, 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 dum. people wearing all black walking up the steps dum, 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 dum. a window man <laughs> screaming <laughs> that doesn't Sorry? Uh, that doesn't seem right um <laughs> Take that out. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> dum, 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 dum. We see a fan spinning, which turns into a recorder spinning, oh. like an old timey recorder where it's like recorded on tape. Oh, oh, oh. And the heartbeat stops. And now it's like him in his office. He's been recording his notes from his case, basically. Gotcha. So he's kind of listening to them, smoking a cigarette. And he starts recording more. And he's like, OK, I found Johnny's band leader. He's up in an elderly home in Harlem. Toot Sweet is the guitar player. He's back in Algiers, which is in New Orleans. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And he says, maybe Margaret is back there too, and maybe Johnny. Okay. What was Mar Margaret's last name? I, it was like... So we, like, have we heard I about don't Margaret? don't think that we have talked about her yet. Other than like, that was alive. just kind of, yeah. Okay. All right. I was thinking I had missed some information. Yeah. I, I don't think we know who she really is yet. Okay. Then we learn, he's recording still, Johnny had a secret love. <gasps> her name was Evangeline Proudfoot. Okay. And she ran a kind of spooky store, for <laughs> lack of better words, up in Harlem <laughs> called spooky Mammy store. Carter's. <laughs> And then he stops, rewinds back to the before the proud foot part. And he's like, you know what? I'm not going to tell old Robbie D about the secret love. He's like, everyone deserves to have something secret or something like that. How noble. Like, cute. So I wonder what that's like to have secrets. I literally have known. <laughs> I've literally told everyone I've ever met everything about me. <laughs> and now a whole bunch of strangers yeah. on a podcast. <laughs> So the only other person he saw regularly was a palm reader named Madame Zorro in Coney Island. Okay. So he goes to... Coney Island. Coney Island. <laughs> so he goes Getting to Getting himself a corn dog. Beach. <laughs> no, a Coney dog. Coney dog? Co Coney dog? Is that what they're called? I don't think I've been to Coney Island. I haven't either. I just know that they have good hot dogs. Don't do they have you, good hot dogs? Do you know that? I don't know if I know that. I don't think... I don't think... I don't think we know anything about it. Let's <laughs> let's find out. Let's find what uh, what do people like about Coney Island? Yeah, we'll we'll fi we'll we'll find that out. I've Continue. only been to Maryland and Jersey beaches. Yeah, and obviously California. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about that side of town. <laughs> okay, that side of town slash country. So 
he goes out on the beach and it's not like summertime. There's just one dude sitting in a beach chair by himself. Okay. He's wearing those like sunglasses with like a nose shield attached to it. Like, like a disguise? Like a child's <laughs> disguise? Like I think it's for sunblock, but it's similar to, yeah, to like a dis- fake nose <laughs> mustache situation. I've Minus ne- the mustache. I cannot picture what you're saying. I'm only seeing a man in a disguise. That is all I'm seeing. <laughs> it's just sunglasses with the little nose part connected. Uh, okay. It's, I, it's a little, little nose shield. I'm going to need to have a picture of this nose shield. <laughs> but the guy's just like, uh, basically, uh, no, Mickey starts asking about Madame Zorro. Zorro. <laughs> Might be Zora. <laughs> Zorro. No, I'm because I'm only picturing a Zorro mask <laughs> with a nose shield. <laughs> yes. Yep. So <laughs> anyway, the guy offers Mickey a nose shield, by the way, and he takes it. So he adds one to his own sunglasses. <laughs> so they're a separate entity? <laughs> yes. I could make a nose shield they out of any of my glasses? He has like a whole box of them because he sells them or something. I don't know. This is like the the funny. He's like a, the character of okay. Coney Island. You well, know? just so you all know, we'll be adding nose shields <laughs> to our merchandise. <laughs> Get your nose shields here. <laughs> nose shields. Uh, so... He's like, hey, do you know Madame Zorro? And the dude is like, yeah, she's a fucking witch. Oh, okay. And Thank he's you. like, okay, how about Johnny? And the guy's like, ask my wife. She's out in the ocean in the big coat. Mm. And he's like, sorry. What? He's like, oh, she she just likes the water. And he's like, she hates the water. She's getting uh, she's getting heavy. It's, she's, she thinks it's good for her varicose veins. Oh, <laughs> ma'am. Uh, ma'am so there's a lady just standing out in the ocean <laughs> with a big giant coat on <laughs> ma'am i don't and think the science checks out mickey's like yells out to the wife asking about madame zorro and she's like she wasn't no gypsy she was a debutante oh you know she was more than tea leaves <gasps> da, 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 da. Uh, and she's like yeah i know johnny and he's like, and then she, he goes like, well, what about Margaret Cruzmark? Cruzmark. That Cruzmark. Was the, okay. Do you know who Madame Cruzmark is? And the lady goes, you big gazoonie. <laughs> Madame, she was Margaret Cruzmark. <laughs> gazoonie. That's the best word I've ever heard. You big gazoonie. So we find out the palm reader lady is Margaret Cruzmark. Okay. Madame Zorro. Madame Zorro is Margaret Cruzmark. So... Mickey's like, all right, well, where is she? How do I find her? And she's like, I don't know. She went back home, down south. Oh, we're going down south. And he's like, what about Johnny Favorite? And she's like, I don't know. Maybe a cemetery. Oh, what okay. the fuck? Private investigator Ketrin. Yes. Question number five. Where do you go next? I'm heading down south, baby. Going down south. Heading down to New Orleans. Ooh. With my nose shield and my tea <laughs> leaves, I'm heading down to New Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> so we get to old Louisiana in a train. Okay. This, I know that he's wearing a suit because he's real sweaty. Because he's like, oh, it's hot here. It, it hot. There's jazz music in the streets and tap dancers in the streets. It was very like when we went to New Orleans, but like 1950, Ugh, the 1950s version of that, that basically. Amazing. Remember just, when we were there and it would just be like, oh, we're just walking down the street and here's a really extremely talented band, band playing just right like now. Walking down the street anywhere. Ugh, so much fun. So much fun. I can't wait to take Eric there. I'm so excited. So we now go through a little bit of a montage of him detectiving things, mm-hmm. investigative things. Mm-hmm. And he um, is in, he finds like a bar and we see a sign for Toot Sweet Band playing at some point. Oh, okay. And then Perhaps some type on of Frenchman Street. Frenchman. And some type of reading room where we see a sign for Margaret Cruzmark giving readings and like a phone number on there. Just out of curiosity, it's okay if you don't know this. Is she calling herself Margaret Cruzmark down in New Orleans? Or it is she referring like, to herself as it, Madame it, Zorro? It felt like Margaret Cruzmark down south. Oh, okay. Interesting. Because I remember... I'm just going to make note of that in my brain hole. 
that she yeah. was using two different names potentially. Yeah. I believe. Okay. It was Margaret Cruz Mark. Okay. I didn't mean to distract you. I just wanted to, as a detective, I, I mean, I to make wrote sure. down Margaret. So I'm assuming I would have wrote down Madame, Madame Z. Zor- yeah, okay. All right, cool. Good, good detectiving. Thank you. So now we see the St. Charles trolley. <gasps> St. Charles trolley. Which we have been on. We have. We watch a, a lady get on and he kind of runs on after her. Uh-huh. She sits down and Mickey's just staring at her. She gets off. He follows. Cut to him ringing a bell for, like a the doorbell mm-hmm. for M. Cruzmark. Ah. And she opens the door and says, hi, Mr. Mickey, baby. <gasps> You know my name. So he has an appointment. Oh, he's going in there to get a reading. And she's like, okay, great. I need to get like details first. And then it like takes a couple days or something. She kind of, there's a picture next to her and he's like, oh, who's that? And she says, it's her father. Okay. I'm just like, okay. So she says, what's your birthday? He says, February 14th, 1918. (gasps) She says. Valentine's baby. "Mm Mm-hmm. She's like, I used how to- appropriate for val- for like the month of February that this is coming out. I feel like Eric didn't even plan that. That's neat. Okay, keep going. <laughs> so she says, I used to know a boy born on that same day, mm. and he's like, well, why don't you just use his chart? And she says, well, everyone's different. Also, you don't want his. <gasps> uh oh. And Mickey's like, well, I guess you didn't get along, you and Johnny. Johnny Ooh, favorite. I'm on to you. Ooh. You can wear all the nose guards you want. I can see right through you. <laughs> and Margaret says, who are you? And, you know, he's like, oh, I'm just an old army buddy. Just kind of being paid to snoop around and, you know, see what's up. Mm-hmm. She says, Johnny died 12 years ago or something like that. And he's like, oh, he's dead. And she says, well, if he isn't, he is to me. Ooh. And she's like, get the fuck out. Jeez. So they're at the doorway now and he like shakes her hand and he's like, I wish I could have gotten a palm reading, could have held your hand longer. And he's all flirty again. Oh just my turning God. on the charm. Talking Mickey. directly to you, Bernsey. Mickey baby. <laughs> so she looks at his hand though and she's like, I don't think you'd like what I see. Eesh. Mm-hmm. There is nothing more uncomfortable than a psychic person. Even if they're full of shit, <laughs> telling you they don't like what they see. Nope. So uh, he does mention something where he's like, oh, that's a very pretty necklace. And it's, and to me, and I'm not sure, but I was like, is that similar to the ring that uh, Robbie D wears? Like it was kind of like a big star, circled star like sort a of pentagram? thing. I don't know that it was a pentagram, but it was a star looking thing okay in a circle but it didn't <laughs> it didn't immediately scream pentagram, pentagram. to you right okay. exactly got it we'll look it up and it was we'll like decorative it. v so he goes now to a shop with dead things in jars got it my least favorite kind of shop. my favorite kind of museum <laughs> and he starts asking that's Steph Mott and I are going to <laughs> <laughs> uh, that she dragged me to in London <laughs> barf all uh, three floors of just dead things in jars oh my god that sounds amazing barf barf <laughs> he starts asking about I'll give you a bonus point if you can guess who asking a, asking of whom asking the the people who run the store okay about a person about is it about johnny favorite no is it about toot sweet no is it about no more no more chances is it about margaret comstock is it about (laughs) madam proudfoot is it no you big (laughs) gazoony who's it about he starts asking about evangeline proudfoot didn't i say proudfoot in there somewhere yeah, you said the eighth person. Okay. He was your eighth guest of this bonus question. Okay. You got zero points. They said that she got sick and died, and she kind of went back to where she lives, which seems to be out in like more like the country ish area. They said she was waiting on a fella, mm. waiting on some fella. And sorry, we are actually in New Orleans. It wasn't that you said this is a place that reminds Kim Burns of New Orleans. No, no, we're, no, actually we're in, in New Orleans. Orleans. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But Evangeline's ha- it went out like, to the country. Clearly, like went to like yeah somewhere else in Louisiana. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, out just like the outer area, not in the city of New Orleans. They say she was waiting on a fella. Aren't we all? And he says, "Oh, I am." 
Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going to cry no. myself to sleep. No, on don't do it. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> She's waiting on a fella. And <laughs> he's like, who's the guy? And they were like, she never told us. Oh. So. Secret secrets. Dick what? Ketrin. <laughs> Dick Ketrin. Okay, I, I approve of that. Dick Porter. <laughs> I approve. Um, where do you go next? Question number six. I'm going to head, head on out to the country. The country. Because I'm a detective. So he gets himself a little car rental. Okay. And he starts driving through the more rural areas mm -hmm. um, outside of New Orleans. You said rural on the first try. That is hard. That's not a. That's not <laughs> talking about you, Kim Burns. I don't know if I've ever heard a human say rural on the first try before in my life. That was really impressive. <laughs> I can get the more difficult words. It's just like, <laughs> you know, the words that are like net and... <laughs> Yes. Um, yes. The everyday words and trip you burlap. up. Burlap. <laughs> those, those are the words that really get me. Uh, those are your Achilles heel. <laughs> so we see that he is now at a small little cemetery and we see Evangeline Proudfoot's grave. Uh oh. 1918 to 1947. And we hear someone come to walk up. He kind of like hides away. And we see a woman with a baby mm. who comes over to that exact grave and is like, come on, we're going to go see grandma. And she starts putting out some like bread and oils around the grave. And there's like things drawn around it. Like it's not like normal. Just like here's flowers. It looks more ritual like looking. Yes. Okay. Good. Good words. <laughs> <laughs> All three. Good words. Good. You have good words. <laughs> so he follows them back to their house and the chick is just starts washing her hair outside and he's like miss proudfoot is this lisa bonet it is what what what's she what's she wearing like a bit of a like a very thin shirt sure sure all right and clearly not anything underneath oh cool, cool, um, cool, cool, cool. anyway mickey goes up and is like Miss Proudfoot and the little boy just starts crying because Aww. of his creepy sunglasses oh. <laughs> thing. <laughs> no shield. That uh. ain't right. <laughs> that little kid is like, take that disguise off. And when you see a picture, it's like not a big thing. It literally <laughs> only covers his nose. It's not like a <laughs> the big like. It's not Long like an honk. extra nose with like a fucking <laughs> all mustache. That's all I'm picturing, and I refuse to picture anything else. <laughs> so they kind of have a little banter now and he's like I want to talk to your mama she's like it's a little late for that she says her name is Epiphany hmm that's cute Miss Lisa Bonet Epiphany Proudfoot and she I think he says that she's pretty sure I agree. and you know I'm here looking for a friend of your mama his name's Johnny Favorite Mm -hmm. And, you know, she doesn't know who he is, doesn't know anything. There's lots of, like, chickens walking around. And they kind of start coming, like, towards him. And he's like, ah. And he's like, I just, I got to think about chickens. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, she's kind of just like, look, my mama had a lot of guys. She liked men. Mm, Been there. And I'm like, right on. <laughs> and he's like, okay, what about Toot Sweet? And she's like, no, I don't know. And so he gives him her number. And he's like, you know, if you remember anything, give me a call. And he's just like... G gives her his number. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And he's just like, you're very pretty. And they just kind of have flirty eyes back and forth with each other. And, and Kim's like, stop looking at my man that way. <laughs> and I'm just like, you're looking at me, aren't you, Mickey? <laughs> <laughs> and he leaves and he like kind of trips over some chickens on the way. And like, <laughs> then there's like kids kind of down the end of the road and he starts playing with them. And it's like cute. Okay. Back to you, Dick Porter. Yes. Question number seven. Where do you go next? Shit. Epiphany didn't give me a ton of info. And Evangeline is dead, apparently. Who have I not met yet? I'm going to go find Toot Sweet. Yes. Correct. I am a detective. So... He goes to a kind of jazz blues club mm -hmm. and the band is playing. Um, we're assuming one of them is Toot Sweet. 
And they stop. He goes up to the bar and Mickey baby comes up to him and starts talking to him. And he's like, oh, hey, I, uh, I heard you play um, Before the War up in New York. You were with um, you were in that band, you know, so and so's band with Johnny Favorite. He's like, that's your buddy, right? And he's like, not my buddy. And he's like, oh, I'm a journalist. I'm just doing like a story about the the, the guy's band that you right. guys were both in, you know. And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, I remember that guy, but um, I got I gotta go. And he goes into the bathroom, and Mickey just follows him right on in. <laughs> sure. And he's like, I don't know nothing, okay. And then he's like, fuck, what the fuck is that? And there's <laughs> a little chicken foot, uh oh, with a string tied around it, on the little like soap canister or whatever okay and just in the bathroom just in the, in the bathroom. public bathroom yeah okay and mickey baby picks it up and holds it in front of toots sweet and he and then bam <laughs> some guy comes in and like throws mickey up against the wall and like holds him so like the chicken foot's like right in his face Ew. and he's like you gotta get out and he's and mickey's just like i got i got a thing about chickens <laughs> And then we see the bouncer basically throwing Mickey out of the bar. And he just gets in his car outside and just But he sits. didn't do anything, right? He didn't actually do anything. Not this, no. Okay. Just Mickey. They sure. just want him out. Okay. Mickey just sits in his car and um, smokes cigarettes, waiting for Toots to leave. Leave. And then he follows him. Okay. So it seems to be pretty, like, night, close to night, night time. Okay. Like, it seems pretty late. Okay. And he follows him into the woods like they drive and then go into like a wooded area and there seems to be kind of a sort of ritual thing sort of happening like there's a fire Uh and like a drum circle and music and chanting there's chickens around and then we see who i think is epiphany proudfoot Uh uh-huh dancing around holding up a chicken Mm -hmm. slicing the chicken and then rubbing blood all over herself that really i don't like that i don't like it do you want to be a witch or not ketrin (laughs) can i be a witch that doesn't hurt amp do you want to be a witch or not ketrin I don't know. <laughs> so she rubs the blood like kind of all over herself and there's fire and like dancing and chanting and, she looks so and all pretty. these things. And um, we're like, what the fuck? And like Toot Sweet kind of sits down and like joins, oh. like playing music basically okay. for them. You know, he's like into it. Yeah. Got so it. we're watching all this. Cut to we followed him now back to Toot Sweet's apartment. He's walking up the apartment stairs. It's like very quiet. And all of a sudden Mickey kind of just like attacks him. And sheesh. Toot Sweet like pulls out a switchblade and slices Mickey's hand. <gasps> they kind of start fighting and Mickey's kind of now like holding him down and he's like, look, I'm not up on this voodoo shit, okay? Like what the fuck's going on? Mm-hmm. And like, what were you doing, you know? And Toot Sweet says that Epiphany is a mambo priestess just like her mom. <gasps> mambo priestess. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, what about that chicken foot in the john? And Toot Sweet says that that means that I got a big mouth. So, okay, I just want to be clear. The chicken foot in the bathroom, that mm-hmm. was a public bathroom, correct? Mm-hmm. But the chicken foot was just sitting in the soap dish. But it was a sign for Toot Sweet to keep his mouth shut. It was a sign. Okay, I see. Got it, got it. Like Done. it means you have a big mouth. Got it. And fucking So someone chill. put it there as like a message to yes. Toot Sweet to 100%. be like, keep your mouth shut. Got 100%. Okay. Yeah. Well, at one point though, we kind of like... As he's like fighting a little bit, we like see he has like a gold tooth that maybe has a star on it. <gasps> Question mark. Pentagram. And so Mickey then is just like, look, here's my number and kind of like shoves it in his mouth. And he's like, in case you um, want to like tell me some information or whatever. OK. I forget what he actually saying. So I wrote something in case you need some deal closing help. <laughs> Super poetic. <laughs> some, some dead chicken help. Dead chicken. Some, Let's go with that. In case you need some dead chicken help. Definitely starts with a D and a C. A help. We'll dead never know. chicken help. I like dead chicken help. In case he needs dead chicken help, he's got Mickey's number yep. now. On a piece he's of paper got it. in his mouth. Yep. Cut to. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Oh, no. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. A gate opens. Bum, bum. Mickey walks into a door a dead chicken (laughs) (laughs) mickey walks into something covered in blood oh 
those figures all in black are like sitting somewhere. It's just like cut to things, cut to things, a cut montage to things. Again. Like heartbeat, dun, 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 a gate closing, dun, dun, a switchblade, dun, 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 blood flowing, dun, 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 dun. he picks it up and he drops it. And then like the hand starts like gushing with blood. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, lots of bloody shirts like, or like a bloody shirt <laughs> touches <laughs> he touches a figure in black he wakes up ah! <laughs> <laughs> there's two guys in his room in suits going through his stuff oh and he's like the fuck yeah and he makes some sort of a joke about cops and then those guys make a joke to him like a dick joke about private detective <laughs> so clearly they're <laughs> cops and they're like busting each other's balls for okay. like each other's job sure and uh, the the kind of head cop was kind of like, oh, that's uh, quite a dream you were having there. Mm. He holds up a note and it says, is this your name and hotel? And he's like, yeah. And the cop's like, well, tell us why we found it in the hand of a dead guy. Uh oh. And he's like, Toot Sweet is dead? Oh, How? dear me. And the cop says, well, technically, asphyxiation by his own genitalia. <gasps> what? <laughs> Kim, please don't <laughs> let me die of genitalia asphyxiation, please. I think it would be harder for you to die of genitalia asphyxiation. Harder, but not impossible. And I'm going to need you to be on this. Okay? Please don't let me die this way. I mean, you could maybe die of someone else's genitalia and then asphyxiate. I mean, the difference between the male, female... Um, Here's what I'm organs saying. Organs is kind if of going to be more important in this situation. Please remove all genitalia from my mouth. <laughs> Whosoever it is, please. I think it'd be a little harder to choke on Why your, you your genitalia. To save me from <laughs> genital asphyxiation. That's what I want to know. I just Why don't are you know skirting the question? How you cutting out your clit is going to asphyxiate you. I was thinking of the labia majora as being something that one could potentially choke on. I guess so. I mean, it wouldn't be like as easy as shoving old cock and balls in your mouth, but you could do it. <laughs> and I don't want it. That's okay. what I'm saying. All right. Thank Look, you. I Thank won't let you. it happen. I won't let anyone cut off <laughs> any of your labias Thank and put them you. in your own mouth. Appreciate it. You the same. But that's what happened to Tootsweet. That's rough. Someone cut his dick off and put it in his mouth until he choked to death. That is a bummer. Real bummer. And then put his blood all over his apartment. Ooh, that's also a bummer. So we find that out. And Mickey says, you know, I interviewed him yesterday around like 1 a.m. I'm on a missing persons case. And, you know, can't really give you any more info. You know, right, right. to privacy. Bump, bump, bump. He's like, I'm working for a lawyer up in, uh, up in New York. You know, a wine smap. So yeah. uh, the main cop leaves and the kind of secondary cop now mm -hmm. is still there. And Mickey very randomly is just like, I should look up if this like any of this means it's very random. He's just like, hey, you ever watch the Mickey Mouse Club? What? And the guy's like, yeah. And he says, because you know what today is? It's Wednesday. It's anything can happen day. <laughs> So when you first started saying it, I was like, is this like this, the screenwriter making a joke about his name being Mickey Rourke? Like, I wonder if that's a, also, when did Mickey Mouse Club start? Yeah, let's look this up. Let's look all this up. I don't know. Mickey Mouse Club. But it was facts. definitely on during in 87. But we're in 1950s right now. In the movie. In the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm saying was the Mickey Mouse Club on in the 1950s. I mean, it had to have been because they knew what it was. Yeah. We're going to look all this up. But I liked that, though. I was like, oh, I wonder if they said that every day. Like, every day is anything can happen day. Oh. Like, did it matter if it was Wednesday or not? You yeah. Know? And I was like, I'm going to start saying that. Let's do it. Hey, Ketrin. What? You know what today is? What? It's Monday. What's Monday? It's anything can happen day. <gasps> it is. Well, thanks for telling me, Bernsey. Anything can happen, you guys. Anything can happen. All right, moving on. <laughs> Cut to Mickey at a bar in a phone booth. He's got old uh, Margaret Cruz Mark's phone number. Mm -hmm. And 
but there's like a mirror in the booth so he's inside of a bar just kind of on the phone and there's like a mirror in there he kind of like starts staring into the mirror and then it starts getting kind of like montage again of just like cut to this cut to this he starts kind of like sweating and staring in the mirror and then it's like the streets of 1943 and up on a billboard or like a a, a, the sign board the the boards above (laughs) the the boards outside of things Uh, the you said billboard first not billboard the uh like a when uh, uh when you go to see a concert and on the uh, outside uh, marquee the marquee got it ring in the new year 1943 it okay. says people in the streets people coming back from war question mark that apartment building again a red one one window lit in red a party the red window the kiss um mickey baby staring in the mirror we see a soldier in the street now a specific one Ooh. his back is to us he goes to grab him and then bam <gasps> someone kind of like taps his arm in the phone booth uh-huh it's the jazz player Fuck, and he's like and hey jazz- hey you want a tune sure and we were like so who's who is the soldier who all right detective also, I heard a little ding there you know what ketrin <laughs> i will shove your labia so far <laughs> down your throat <laughs> It's true. I didn't tell you that you couldn't kill me by genital asphyxiation. I told you to save me if anyone else did. Where do you go next? I'm in the phone booth. I'm in the jazz club. Can I go? Can I? Can I go back and see Epiphany? Can I talk to Epiphany a little bit more? Can I go do that? You could, but May you'd I? be wrong. Oh, okay. Oh, I wasn't even playing the game. I was just going to see what Epiphany <laughs> is up to. Where's he go? I think I maybe meant to ask you that question earlier, but. Mm. There was another point where I was like, this would be a good time to ask her where to go. And then I couldn't find where I wanted that post-it oh, note to go. My, my answer still have probably would have been epiphany. <laughs> so it's fine. Correct. <laughs> he goes back to an apartment building we've seen before. We see Margaret Cruz Mark's name on the door. Mm-hmm. He opens the door. What does he find inside? Question number nine. Bobby D and his nails good guess but incorrect Woo! he finds who her dead body no she's shit. dead shit on the floor that very bloody he is gagging because oh. it is not good thinking she's been stabbed oh, no. then kind of starts looking through her stuff and i'm like why are you touching everything why Stop touching are, everything well as we know there is zero crime scene protocol until like last year but i'm like he was so. he knew to wipe everything down before oh, that's true so. that's true that's true you know so why mean? is he looking through shit yeah like, it was if it wasn't already brought up once in the movie then i wouldn't have thought anything right. about it to right. be honest so is this dead body number th- three? so we're on we've got doctor doctor to sweet margaret now margaret i think, I think so it's just three okay so he kind of starts looking through all her stuff and i'm like what the fuck one of the things she op- he opens is like a box with like a creepy like mummified hand in oh, it no. and i'm like Grr. but then he does find her part her apartment appointment book <laughs> her apartment appointment book <laughs> her apartment <laughs> book. okay and <laughs> we start hearing boom, 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 oh, again that hard again and he um it's just like boom, 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 boom. He he looks through the appointment book and he finds his own appointment and he rips it out. The oh. one with his name out. He's like, fuck. Mickey, dude. He can't, he can't have his name in there. I know, but but somebody's going to see. Here's the thing. Somebody is going to see that that page is ripped out. A detective is going to see that that page is ripped out and they're going to go, who was here? And they're going to try and figure it out. And then they're going to find him and they're going to go, right. why did you rip the, th- the thing Correct. out? If but, he hadn't ripped it out, may not have even... Not of anything. But they've already the cops have already been in his in his hotel room once. I hear you. So then he looks over at something and looks like he is going to throw the fuck up. Jeez. It is. Do you want to guess? A chicken. <laughs> no. <laughs> he looks at something. He just like looks over and is like uh, uh This would he, just be a bonus point. He, uh, he already barfed at Margaret Kuzmark. I'm going to go with chicken. He's not a fan of chickens. It's a human heart. Oh! We're going to say Margaret's human heart. Oh! That has probably been cut out of her. Oh! Are we back in the coal mines? Right? Jeez, Louise! Howard Manson? Is that you? Howard... (laughs) 
Can everyone keep their hearts inside their chest, please? Howie Manson Jr. And their labias <laughs> on their vaginas, please. please. Keep your labia on your vagina. <laughs> Cut to him at a bar. In the daytime, Oop. it's empty and he is drinking Oop. alone. That's never good. I Been mean, there. <laughs> poof. I think I think that's the right move right now. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Like, honestly, where, like, truly, truly, if we racked our brains of where else to go, we That's, would always come back we to gotta a, go there. an alone bar drinking. So now um, we're just seeing maybe like a baptism ha- happening in the water. Sorry. People are yelling baptism. So we're not at the bar anymore. No, I don't know. This is just like it cuts to other things now cuts that I guess things. are just happening around, okay. like some okay. type of baptism situation. Okay. People yelling, jazz music playing. Now Mickey's driving. And it appears that someone is following him in a big red truck. Uh oh. And it's kind of like the, like maybe the road probably to the Proudfoots. Okay. So it's kind of more like dirt roads or whatever a mm-hmm. little bit. So question number 10 you notice that a big red truck is following you what do you do and what does he do and i'm on a dirt road like a, like meaning it's just like, the way the roads are that's not a right but I, i'm saying my choice would be different if we were on like a highway with exits is what i'm saying or a or a yeah, city no. or city Let's, streets where i can no okay uh I am going to, okay, me, Ketrin. I am going to pull off to the side of the road. I'm going to uh, hide my pepper spray in my sleeve, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to get out of the car and I'm going to say, hey, hey, so glad you guys are following me. There seems to be something rattling in my car. Uh, can you guys come help me check it out? I don't know anything about cars. And then it sort of disarms them. They walk over to me. I pepper spray them, jump back in the car, drive away real fast. Pepper spray first, ask questions later, as Georgia Hardstark says. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and what does he do? Right, there's another person here. He gets out, does the same thing, but punches them all in the face. And then gets in the car and drives away. He gets out, does it. So he pulls over and gets out mm-hmm. and does the same thing. But punches uh, them all in the face. But punches them all in the face. I guess we both punched them in the face. <laughs> I pepper sprayed them in the face. He punched them in the face. I'm going to yeah. give you a half a point. Okay. Half a point. For him. Okay. And no points for you. Why? Because you'll see. Okay. He pulls over and gets out. So that's what your half a point is for. Okay. But he leaves his car. Okay. He walks away. There appears to be like a little walk path bridge. Uh huh. You know what? I'll give you a full point because I think that's what I was asking. Oh, thanks. Was kind of like because you couldn't know that he would do these future things mm-hmm. without knowing what was going on. Okay, you'll get a full ding. Thanks. Um, but it was as compared to like just speeding away. Right, right, right. Like right, right. he pulls over and gets out. Yeah. He crosses this little, little like walk path bridge over some water where there appear to be some kind of like you know houses or trailers or something over there and there's a couple guys out front of their house like sh- uh shilling oysters shucking, shucking oysters mm-hmm. shilling. <laughs> i knew that like i was like i saw i saw it <laughs> you know the word what is it <laughs> shucking oysters <laughs> and uh he kind of just walks up to him and is just like hey guys um how, how much for the oysters you know just trying to like be Distra- normal yeah. a little bit but the guys in the truck have also gone out of their truck, pulled over, gotten out. They have a very angry, mean dog. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> with them. <laughs> was that a burp or a half sneeze or a hiccup? It was a burp. Please specify. Burp. Got it. Got a lot of drinks. <laughs> a lot of drinks next to me. They uh, get out with their dog and their baseball bats and <gasps> follow him good. across the bridge. And he's trying to just be like, just get oysters. <laughs> I don't know what you guys Anyone want. Some oysters? <laughs> and the dog just attacks him. No. And then they kind of attack him. And they're like, listen, old man Cruise Mark wants you to get on the first train out of here. Oh, you no. hear? We haven't met old man Cruise Mark, correct? Okay. No. So it's uh, Margaret Cruise Mark's dad. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. 
once you're out of here. Get on a train and get out. Get out of here. So. Can I ask a question? Yep. Just out of curiosity. What kind of dog was it? I have no idea. Don't remember. So outside the Proudfoot house now, Mm -hmm. he's made his way there looking beat up. Mm. And his wife respect her. Yeah. Always. (laughs) Never gets out of that thing. Never. (laughs) Except for when he does get out of it. (laughs) Yeah, he does. When he's like really respecting his wife. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Epiphany is there and he's like, I saw you the other night at uh, your old party, party in the woods. Ooh, your chicken slaughter party. And, uh, you know, Toot Sweet is dead. Mm. And uh, you set him up because you're the only one who knew I was going to see him. Right. And and uh, he's like, I know about your like chicken foot too okay <laughs> and she's just like yeah well you know he had a big mouth <gasps> and oh, mickey's just no. like wow quite a religion you have there and she's like yeah it's just as bad as nailing some guy to a cross right that's what i'm saying <laughs> and she's like look we don't go around murdering people mister okay we just tell them to shut up with chicken feet and she's like, so what about like your Johnny favorite? And he's like, so you do remember him? And he's like, and she says, yeah, he was my father. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Oh, shit. He never came back from the, mor- from the war. Mama waited. Mama died. Oh. And so he just sad. looks at her and his Mickey. His Mickey eyes. Mickey way. Marlon Brando way. Ooh. And says, Stella. Stella. He says, you have beautiful eyes. Beautiful eyes let you see everything that's going on in the inside. You're scared. Uh, Mickey, Mickey, she's telling, she's saying that Mickey is scared. No, he says this to her. Oh, okay. She's scared. Okay. He says, you're scared. Okay. He kind of starts to leave. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I know. Call you if I need anything. And he turns and says, hey, call me if you don't. (gasps) And I wrote, okay. Okay. (laughs) What's up? So Mickey Baby goes back to his hotel. There's a message for him, which takes him to a big old Catholic church. Mm -hmm. And sitting in one of the pews alone is none other than... Bobby D. Bobby D. Bonus point. (laughs) (laughs) That wasn't a question. (laughs) So uh, he's like, look, progress ain't too good. No Johnny favorite, three dead bodies. Yeah, it's not looking great. Three murders. <laughs> lots of <laughs> not uh, looking great. Lots of religion stuff going on <laughs> around this thing. Um, <laughs> looks like Johnny Favorite had some bad luck and it's starting to rub off on me. OK, yeah. so uh, yeah. I uh, he's like, I'm being set up and it's starting to like scare the shit out of me. So he's walking back now in the rain, kind of walks up to his hotel room and Epiphany is like asleep sitting like against his doorway Aww, like it's like she... r- pouring rain so she's all like squeezed into the door because she was skilled waiting for him they go inside and he's like frightened eyes never lie <gasps> they have a bow, drink chicka, bow, wow. um, wow. they have a drink and he kind of asks like why was your mama with johnny favorite and she says it's always the the bad guys that make the heart beat faster or the badasses that make <gasps> the heart beat faster something Girl, like that, that the <laughs> i was like truth boof yeah oy, oy, oy. and she says my mama said a few things about him that johnny favorite is as close to true evil as <gasps> she's ever come jeez and he was also a great lover sure <laughs> the evil ones always are ain't that the truth and mickey says how old are you And she says, 17. 17? I know. What? And I was like, but, but. But you just tried to bone her. What? You just talked about boning her. Maybe the age of. And then, and he's like, isn't that young to have a kid? And she's like, old enough. But like, Uh, I feel like they could have just said 18. 18. Just say 18. And just make, just make the audience less uncomfortable. Still young. Let's just do that. Yeah. But yeah, then I was like, well, maybe the, the Age the age of consent. In Louisiana in 1955. Is I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing that I always do when I think about the age of consent differing. I feel like our age of consent currently 
of being 18 is based in some sort of science because I do think about like my decision-making skills at like 15, 16, 17, they were not up to par in terms of how the de- the yeah. good decisions I made for myself. Yeah. Frankly, I, mean, I think 18 is still. <laughs> I was just going to say that. I was like, but I don't think 18 changes that either. But I think 18 was they had other things on the books where it was like, if we're going to ask you to go to war, we have to at least yeah. also say that you can fuck. Who I mean, you, you can't want. drink alcohol, <laughs> which is which during Vietnam War. Go to war. <laughs> And also during the Vietnam War, when they were drafting people, this is why my dad was allowed to drink during his senior year of high school, because they literally said, if we're going to draft 18 year olds to war, we can't tell them they can't drink. drink. Yeah. So they lowered the drinking age for that reason. Yeah. Well, I thought that was interesting. I was like, super interesting. why are you 17? Just be a different age. Just be 18. You could have been any age. Because 18 still makes us go, that's real young. Like, it still makes us go, that's real young to have yeah. a kid, except we was, don't get the heebie-jeebies. It was weird. <laughs> Not that I think Mickey's, like, super old in this by any way, shape, or he, like, he didn't appear to be, like, so old, you no, know what I mean? No, but like, it was just, like... But I feel like they were having fuck-me eyes, and we know that the age of consent yeah, is 18. it immediately made me uncomfortable. Yeah. But we don't know that. The, right. I'm saying the modern audience feels that the age of consent is but 18. But even, like, in 1987, like, I don't know. Oh, may- yeah, that's true. Maybe it wasn't. Let's look it up. Age of consent. So anyway, talk about her having a kid and she's like, oh, basically he was conceived at like some festival, you know. <laughs> Burning Man. <laughs> 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 um, but like, you know, something wooing the gods and shit like that. Burning Man. I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it down and it looks like. Chuiden Bombacher. Exactly. Chuiden Bombacher. Yep. Festival. Heard of that one too. Um, <laughs> praising the Lords. And she's like, you know what? It's the best fuck I ever had. Ooh. Sure. How she's, old was her kid, by the way? Was it like a baby? Um, like a little. He was able to walk. Okay. Like a toddler, so like maybe though. toddler one Definitely or two. Definitely a toddler. Okay. Yeah. She puts on some music and it's like, hey, you want to dance? And they kind of dance and it's actually kind of cute. And then they kiss. Hey. And then they fucking. He's in his wife respecter. And he takes his wife respecter off because they fucking. <laughs> and it's really hot. And he, they had already. Kim, you don't need to tell me that 1987 Mickey Rourke <laughs> and 1987 Lisa Bonet is really hot while they're fucking. Okay. <laughs> You don't need to tell me that. Oh, I got okay. it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ketrin. <laughs> Maybe I will just say it for everyone else listening that isn't already completely picturing it. Although you all already are. You and you are. know you Come are. On. You dirty fucks. You know you are. You know. <laughs> you know you're Googling the scene right now. <laughs> so it's already been set up that his room leaks a little bit because it's like a hotel room and it's like pouring rain oh, okay. always there. So, but it's like he has some bowls out at different points where it's like water stripping into it. Sorry, I'm just picturing when we got stuck in the rain in that cemetery. In New Orleans. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like it fucking pours down rains oh, in New Orleans. That was awesome. So they're like fucking on the bed and it's really hot and it starts yeah. to get really sweaty. And yeah. then it's like we kind of see some water dripping uh-huh. in places, but then water is dripping like everywhere. Oh, uh-huh. I skipped a part. This is great. Okay. It's real hot. See. You distracted me when you got mad at me for saying it was hot. Sorry. Okay. Because this is, okay, it's hot, Ketrin, yeah. but also he, like, they are making out and then he starts licking down his her body and he licks her nipple. Like, he puts her nipple into his mouth and yes. I watched it happen. I'm almost 100% positive that it wasn't just me creating it in my brain. Right. I think that it was on the screen that I was watching. And why? But why? isn't that like porn? Is that allowed to happen in movies? I I and am then, under the impression that I have seen. Don't quote me on this. I could be wrong. I will do further research. I feel like I have seen nipples in mouths outside, outside of, of porn. pornos. I Where? was under the impression that pornos were differentiated because there was penal vaginal 
penetration like, I know you can't show or not like just a, penal vaginal you can't show like a sort of hard penetration. penis that's yeah not allowed. i feel like it was like a hard penis and penetration of an orifice was porn no that can't be right because haven't we seen blowjobs in movies with you, like a I, penis I'm into a mouth almost positive you can't show hard penises that's why like you can't show hard penises anytime you see a dick like on game of thrones or something yeah, like that it's, it's always, always flaccid. like flaccid Even and then they're, they're like, immediately having fucked. sex yeah yeah. yeah yeah like either way yeah. like sex is like just starting or just, just ending yeah. but it's because they can't show like a because that is porn but like i we're gonna look this up but i it believe felt like something i hadn't seen really okay. like i was like oh, okay that you're her, her actual seen outside of porn her actual nipple but then i also thought about it in like an actor way mm. where i was like Lisa Bonet's nipple was is actually in Mickey Rourke's mouth. mouth on the set <laughs> while a shit ton of people sit around and watch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, That's, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, whoa, shit. Because actually, I think there's, okay, we have so much research to do on just this one scene. <laughs> I need to learn all there is to know about it. But I believe that there was something, I think Lisa was on the Cosby show yeah when this was cast and I think Bill ironically oh shit got put up a stink about this oh is that why she like had because she kind of got cut out of the show yes because they were mad at her and I must I'm know almost this. positive I yes. know I know this too I didn't know it was for this movie I think it was for this movie because I think fucking it, shit okay. Bill Cosby yeah. you so, fuck face well, you fucking fuck face because I think that was one of the selling points when Eric was like watch Angel Heart with me Lisa Bonet gets naked and fucks a hot Mickey Rourke. And I was like, you're almost selling, you know? <laughs> yeah, sure. And then I think it was Eric that told me that this is why this she was fired. This is why she got like, yeah, written out of the show. Which it's like, Fuck. now what we know about Bill Cosby, Fuck I'm like, you, you, you fucking, fucking piece, of, piece shit. of shit. You fucking Fuck you. piece of shit. Anyway, okay, we're going to research all of that. That whole sex know. scene. Yeah. We'll postmortem the yeah, fuck we'll, out of this yeah. one. For we're going to have a whole postmortem our- <laughs> just about that scene. <laughs> Anyone who is over on our Patreon, get ready to talk oh, about yeah. nipple licking for a long time. <laughs> and yo, oh my God, this is going to be a great one. And okay. anyone who's not on a, on Patreon for your bone con. Yeah. <laughs> bonus, bonus content. Oh, man. We've got nipple licking at, on our bone con yep. on Patreon. Nipple licking at bone con. All right. So, so where were we? They're What's fucking. Happening? It's okay. hot. They're Nipples sweaty. and sweaty. They're licking nipples. The water starts dripping or like some water's dripping and then water is like everywhere. It's oh. just like wet. Like it's water everywhere. It's super hot. And I'm like, ooh, and there's water dripping. And then it's kind of seems like blood. And then oh, it's no. like there's blood running around. And I'm like, ah, and there's blood everywhere. Oh, no. And then it's kind of cutting again to like different like things. And it's just like people covered in all black. That war guy, the chicken dancing. And then we're back to like fucking and da 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 And then blood. And then we kind of see like it's like we're like not hearing them. It's like just like cut, 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 mm-hmm. cut. And then we kind of start to see like her her it looks like she's screaming but not necessarily in pleasure sort of and then it's like he's choking her and then all of a sudden like she's like and it's like her screaming and him choking her and then he like stops and cuts out of it oh shit and he like lets her go and he gets up and he's like fuck and he walks over to a mirror and he punches it oh shit cops knock on the door Uh, okay okay they look inside and they see Epiphany Proudfoot sitting on the bed. Mickey Baby goes outside and starts talking to them. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, why are you here? And he's like, the cop's like, well, now we have a reason because, you know, around here, colored folks keep to themselves. Oh, and it's 1940s. Yes. And Mickey's like, well, I'm not from down here. And I'm not a fucking racist. Yeah. And then he uses the N-word a couple times. The, the cop, cop does. Or Mickey. No, the cop does. Oh. And he's just like, whatever. And I was like, okay. Mm, I'm uncomfortable. And, but the cop came there because he's like, Margaret Cruzmark have anything to do with your case? Yeah. And Mickey's like, nope. Oh, nope, nope, nope. And he, I said nope as well. The cop says... That guitar player didn't matter because he was into voodoo and they just kill each other all the time or some shit like that. You asshole. But Cruz Mark, she's from a rich family. Mm. So 
she matters and she's important. <gasps> but they were killed Rude. in like a similar circumstance because they cut her heart out. Jeez. And uh, so he's like, just tell us the person that you're looking for. Like, give us information about yeah. like your missing person. And Mickey's just like, can't, you know, blah, 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 privacy. Confidentiality. Da, 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 da. See you later. Bye. Goes back in. Epiphany's now in the bathtub and she's singing a song. It turns out it's a Johnny favorite song. <gasps> oh. And um, Gosh, Mickey so kind of just like goes and looks into a broken mirror and it looks like maybe a single tear runs down his face. Oh, how I'm dramatic. Sure. <laughs> Cut to daytime. He's in the street kind of going towards his car and he sees across the street parked is that fucking red truck. <gasps> Shit. And two guys are in it. What does he do and what do you do? Question number 11. He's outside of his uh, his hotel. I don't know. He's kind of like walking down street, a road. But yeah. is it a populated road? Yeah, I would assume it seems like the center of town sort of thing. Like a, It's one of those streets where it's like the parking spots like turn in like they're they're vertical instead of horizontal okay and it's two guys in the truck mm -hmm. do they see him um or can you not tell probably me? okay i think mickey goes up and i think mickey is a hothead and he's also kind of losing it we're getting a lot of heartbeat montages which i think speaks to his state of mind i think he goes up and fucking Nick Cage style punches them in the face and is like, why are you following me? <laughs> and what do I do? I'm in a populated street. I'm going to kind of do a, a reverse follow in the sense that I'm now going to act as if I don't see them, but I'm going to keep constantly aware of them and sort of continue to make them think that I don't see them following me so I can try and gain information about them in a detective-y kind of way. Okay. Yay! So Mickey goes up to the truck and headbutts the driver. <laughs> the, Nicholas Age I, style. Ick age. <laughs> the other guy gets out and he starts chasing him. They end up at a stable. They're like inside a stable and there's like horses everywhere. The guy he was chasing is now like loading a gun and starts to try to like shoot at him. But they're kind of like dodging each other and shit. Then the truck pulls up with the fucking dog in it. Mm -hmm. And the uh, dog kind of jumps out and like attacks. But then a horse gets in the way or like kicks or something. I don't mm -hmm. know. So it's chaotic. Mickey baby um, kind of goes through like another door. He opens it. It's a fucking chicken coop. Oh, shit. And he's like, Fuck. why did it happen? And then he has Snakes. to run through all the chickens. <laughs> okay. He gets away. Question number 12. Who does he go to find next? And who do you go to find next? I'm going to go find Lisa. <laughs> that's just your answer. <laughs> Ever since she appeared, that's been your answer for yeah. any time you need to find I someone. I just think she's really pretty. <laughs> she is very beautiful. Mickey. He goes and finds somebody. Is that the question you asked yep. me? Isn't uh, she married to, what's his face? Jason Momoa. Yeah. Do they have kids? I thought you were going to ask what I was thinking was, do they have a sex tape? And I was like, <laughs> no, I've been looking. <laughs> 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 they they do have children. Yes. I bet those are the most beautiful children oh that have ever existed God, in the history so of time. Oh my God, they are so beautiful and they're just like little they're just like little woodland sprites, like in the sense that they just run around barefoot and climb rocks. Like they're just little. They must they're be just, real. Oh, God. Really beautiful. Oh, God. I've looked so hard for that sex tape. They have not released one. Yeah. They uh, don't seem like the type. They're not. And that's why I love them so much. What are we talking about? Who are you going to find? Dick Porter. <laughs> Dick? Oh, uh, excuse me, Dick. Dick Porter. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. I'm here. I'm here. Back to yes. work, sir. Yes. Sorry. Uh, I'm here. Paying you a $25 uh, day here. Yep. Who am I going to go find? Who is not dead? Everybody is fucking dead. Too Sweet is dead. Margaret Comstock is dead. I'm going to go see Louis, Louis Cipher. Mm. No points. Okay. I truly just couldn't think of somebody else that was alive. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do I get points for, for me going to see Lisa Bonet? No. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I'll tell you who we end up at, but I'm going to describe it a little first. Okay. So we're outside. There appears to be a crowd of people 
with one guy in the center skinning some animals. No. And I'm like, chickens? I would like to leave. I don't know. And then around some more people that are cheering things on and I'm like, chicken fight? Uh, I would also like to leave. happening? Then there appears to be some type of horse race happening and people cheering for that. But also these people seem to be a little bit more like wealthy folk. Mm Mm-hmm. He kind of gets directed toward one guy and he walks up to them or to to this one older gent. Mm -hmm. And that guy immediately says to him, what do you want, Mickey baby? (gasps) So he knows who he is. Yeah. And Mickey's like, your guy's been following me around. (gasps) I'm looking for Johnny favorite. Oh, is it is it Master Comstock? Yeah. Or (laughs) it is. That's exactly who it is. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) It's not For anyone com- who didn't understand, Fenster stock. Catherine's no. com- ch- changes of all that. It's old man Cruise Mark. Cruise Mark. Cruise Mark. AKA thank you. Master Cumstock. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mickey's like, I'm looking for Johnny Favorite. And Master Cumstock is like, as far as I know, he's dead. Shit. And uh, Mickey's like, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe he's not. Maybe he'll kill your daughter. <gasps> mm, I don't know. I don't know. And Master Comstock is like, who's employing you? He's like, I'll pay you more. Tell me, tell me. And he's like, don't worry. They're paying me. It's fine. You know, he's yeah, like, I don't need your money. Mickey's honorable. He ain't going to give that shit up. Right. And uh, he starts, Mickey starts saying to Master Comstock saying, 12 years ago, you and Margaret snatched Johnny Favorite out of a hospital, put him in a car and you were under the name Edward Kelly. Mickey is saying this to Master Comstock. Yep. Okay. He's like, I figured you out. Shit. Master Comstock says, let's go inside. Uh-oh. Detective. So, <laughs> detective. <laughs> they walk into a house. On the outside of it is this big, giant like they walk by a big giant hot tub size boiling pot of gumbo that like what? Master Comstock actually like walks by and like s- like stirs with like a paddle at one point. A hot tub size gumbo. cauldron like of they gumbo. they making some gumbo for everyone. Is this a dream? No. Okay. I think this is just Louisiana. Okay. They're just making some gumbo. Hot tubs of gumbo cool but it was it it was just fucking large okay like he literally was like want some gumbo wow okay anyway they walk by that and then go into this room and start talking so master comstock starts spilling the beans he's like look it was me you are right i got that took johnny favorite that took johnny favorite we took him to uh times square on new year's eve in 1943 and we just left him in the crowd and Why? he says, I did it for my daughter for some type of like magic that they were doing. For epiphany, basically. Oh, no, 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 no. For, for, for Margaret. 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 Got right. it. Yeah. Like she was into that kind of thing. She even had like a hand of magic or something. And Mickey was what? like, yeah, I saw I that saw fucking that. mummy hand. Yeah. What the fuck? That was an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, too. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. What is that? What did they say about it? Uh, they didn't say much. It was more of a... Uh, it doesn't matter. It was a prop device. Keep going. Well, my notes on it looked like they say, hand of magic, mummy hand, of murder while neck and noise. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, all no. I know so about you it. saw that episode. Yeah. It was it was the so, episode Buffy the Vampire so, Slayer, murder of neck and noise. So clearly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clearly I know about it. They were kind of just talking about it to be like, Margaret's into that shit. Right. Okay. And Mickey starts getting kind of like feisty. He's starting to get a little like... Mickey, getting, he's cool getting excited. your head. Yeah, cool he's your not head. keeping it cool. He's like, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Who, do, who, who got it into? Got her into it, huh? Oh. You, oh. you, Master Comstock, Mickey, take a breath. And Master Comstock says, "Look, the Prince of Darkness protects the powerful. Who is bringing the Prince of Darkness into this ish?" She says, "I introduced Johnny Favorite to my daughter. Johnny Favorite sold his soul to Satan, <gasps> and he was very." powerful he was a powerful man and that's why i wanted to introduce him to my daughter kim that is really intense he sold his soul for stardom oh <laughs> i can't feel that. about that i'm you know <laughs> it's it, it's tough out there i don't know what to tell you yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, I've tried a lot of things. As have I. So, you know, if that's last on the list, you got to do what you got to do, you know? You do you, girl. If anybody uh, has got a little Satan hookup out there. Yeah, if anyone could just. Uh, <laughs> if anyone's got what's a. His, what's his Insta a handle? hand of magic. I'm going to slide into available. his DMs. <laughs> <laughs> so, Johnny made it big. And then he dr- tried to duck out so he didn't oh, have to fucking. Oh, he didn't have to pay the devil back? Pay the devil. Exactly. Ooh, you can't so do that? They basically. The devil wants to be Venmoed right away. <laughs> him and, him and um, Margaret had like an ancient manuscript. And they basically just needed to like steal another soul or something Shit. like that. So they picked up a soldier in Times Square and they took him back to their place and we see a red window uh, as he's oh, describing it. Uh-huh. All these things happening. And they had like incantations and um, a dagger of some sort. And they basically like sliced him open <gasps> and ate his heart. What? I think is what my notes say. I'm sorry. Who are we slicing and who are we eating? The soul, like the a random soldier? soldier. Oh, God. Okay. They picked up a random soldier in Times Square in 1943 Times Square, New Year's uh, Eve. And sliced him open and ate his heart. That's really rude. And we kind of start, as this is all happening, we're, you know, as the story is coming along, we're starting to hear boom, 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 boom. Oh, shit. And Mickey's starting to kind of like lose a little bit. bit. She's like, I don't know, something weird's going on. And Master Comstock keeps talking. He says the plan was to drop out. You know, like Johnny Favorite that was a star. He just drops out of the biz. And then this new guy resurfaces. Like he uh, takes over uh, the soldier's body, uh, basically, sure. as far as I can tell. Uh huh. And becomes like a star again and like gets away with like cheating the devil. Shit. But he got drafted and came back not knowing who he was. Shit. Cut to, or now like Mickey like runs into the. Like the the room we're in is connected to a bathroom. He runs into the bathroom and starts throwing up, and he's like sweating. And it's like dun 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 dun. And he says, "Who's the boy?" Meaning, who's the soldier? Yeah. And Johnny Johnny is the only person who knew who the boy was. He did take his um, dog tags. He put them in a vase and he gave them to Margaret. Okay. And took his dog tags, put them in. Okay. Um, Margaret's idea was to pick up Johnny favorite drop him off in the last place that he was so that he would kind of maybe start remembering who he was so that's why they dropped him in Times Square on New Year's Eve okay and then it starts like flashing all of the things that we've like been seeing throughout like the flashes of the movie you Mm -hmm. know or it's like dun 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 and it's like the soldiers in Times Square and you know we're hearing the same story and people in black and he's and Mickey's just freaking out and he's like, who's the boy? Who's the boy? And he opens the door of the bathroom and goes back into the room he was just in. What does he find? Louis Cipher. Incorrect. Fuck me. Dead body. Ah! <laughs> of Master Comstock? Master Comstock is dead. His head is in the boiling hot tub of gumbo no dead i don't want heads in my gumbo his entire half body in the gumbo i am bummed that gumbo is ruined okay you just heard that story yes he runs away where does he go where do you go i'm gonna go to i'm gonna go back to Margaret Comstock's house. And where does he go? Uh, we're going together. I'm driving him. <laughs> He's in too much of a state to go by himself. That's very kind of you. Yeah. Oh, uh, I got three. <laughs> that, was, that was two. <laughs> so he's running up the stairs, holding a gun. He, he get that? runs into her apartment and he just starts looking through everything. What is he looking for? Uh, what is he looking for? The dog tags! Yes! 
that wasn't a question but <laughs> in the um, uh, he starts looking through everything he the, finds a vase he smashes it inside our dog tags dog tags on them they say mickey J- baby mickey, baby harold angel oh, birthday sh- two, in 1918 Fe- oh and he just starts screaming shit fuck no all of a sudden Robbie D is behind him chilling on a couch eating eggs just looking all smug fuck and Mickey is just like I know who I am I know who I am oh no Robbie D says how terrible is wisdom when it brings no profit to the wise Johnny (sighs) <sighs> dun, dun, dun. and he Shit. says and Mickey's like Lewis Cipher Lewis Cipher Lucifer the Lucifer, Lucifer. Lucifer. The <laughs> and <laughs> Bills he, and Mickey just starts screaming. He's freaking out. He's like, you think posing as the devil is going to scare me like it scared everyone else? I know who I am. Bitch, he's not you posing. You killed them and you're trying to pin it on me. Yeah. Robbie D's just fucking chill. And he's like, if I had cloven hooves and a pointed tail, would you, would you be more convinced? Mm-hmm. And Mickey's just like, you're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> trying to frame me. I never killed nobody. <laughs> And Robbie's like, all killed by your own hand, Johnny. Shit. Guided by me. But it all started when you sliced that soldier's body in half. Fuck. And Mickey's just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell Winesmap. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Winesmap on you. I'm gonna sue ya, you see? <laughs> and Ro- Robbie D's just like, oh, he's dead. <laughs> sure he is. Flesh is weak. Only the soul is immortal. And yours and an belongs egg. to me. <laughs> and then his eyes start glowing yellow. <gasps> Shit. I bet Bobby D was so good at this. And Mickey's just like, I know I am. I know I am. And he's like crying. Robbie D just goes and puts on a record. And it's Johnny Favorite's music. Oh, fuck. And Mickey's just fucking crying. And he's like a really good actor here, too. Like he's killing it yeah but he's just like freaking the fuck out and then it's flashes of things flashers flashes of dr fowler in front of him holding up his hands like don't shoot me don't shoot me oh shit. flashes of bloody dr fowler flashes of mickey holding a knife flashes of bloody margaret in front of him <gasps> flashes of hands his hands choking to sweet oh no flashes of mickey baby holding that same switchblade but all bloody while he's like smoking a cigarette oh no. Mickey baby holding down old man cruise mark into the jumbo into the gu- jumbo gumbo <laughs> the jumbo gumbo <laughs> into the jumbo gumbo <laughs> and he's just like I know who I am flash epiphany being choked no. and screaming oh no and he's like I know who I am but we it's the same fic- picture we've already seen right but like what the fuck we right? are now Mickey baby turns around and Robbie D's gone he runs outside and he runs into the rain. Where does he go and where do you go? Question he's, number 15. He's going to go find Lisa this time. Where? At wherever she is. <laughs> she's and going he, to go it, to the place where she is to and, see if she's alive. And what are you, you saying? You yeah, say. I mean, I'm, I'm always going to go find Lisa. I'm going to give you half and half. Okay. He does go to find Epiphany Lisa, but not at like her house. He goes back to his hotel room. Because that's where that scene happened. Because he's like, fuck. Was she dead? He goes to his hotel. A figure in all black is sort of like sitting in the hallway outside. And we like walk by it. And then you see the face. And it's like Robbie D inside. What? The door to his room is open. Epiphany is dead on the bed. (gasps) With his dog tags laying on her. And she's just like covered in blood. There's a cop in the room. Oh, shit. The jig is up. The cop says, who is she? Mickey Baby says, she's my daughter. What? <laughs> Ketrin's, Ketrin's brain is working right now. Oh, no. We were so Ketrin's worried about him brain. fucking someone underage. We didn't even stop to think <laughs> if he was fucking his daughter. His own daughter. 
fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Boo. Am I wait, am I going to jail because I was turned on by him fucking his daughter? <laughs> what does this say about me? When is my next therapy appointment? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Okay. Reel it back. Reel it back in. Okay. We've only got a little bit left. Keep it together, Ketrin. Okay. She's my daughter. Cop says bullshit. Okay. Oh, She's no. Epiphany Proudfoot. She she stayed here for a little while. The cop's uh, like, yeah, long enough for you to kill her. Unless that isn't your gun up her snatch. <gasps> and I was like, what? Okay, that's too much. That's just a step too far. Your gun up her snatch. Come on. On. I literally wrote, damn, that is rude. The devil is so extra. <laughs> so rude. Like, the- so rude. That so is the other, you know, more side cop comes in and is like carrying her son from the other room. And oh, her son, fuck. The cop is like, you're going to burn for this. And he's like, I know in hell. And then the little boy eyes start to glow <gasps> yellow. No. And just point at Mickey. Oh, his stepson grandson is the devil. Cut to a gate closing. One of those like old elevators, you know, like a crate elevator. Crate elevator? Crate elevator. That doesn't sound like the right word. Freight. Freight. <laughs> Freight elevator. Freight. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just the sound of an elevator going like the gate closes. An elevator. Credits. 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 The elevator's going. Credits. Elevator. Credits. Elevator. The elevator stops going down. Uh-huh. Mickey Baby's inside. Bum bum. Bum bum. Bum bum. Mickey. Yes. Johnny. Yes. Cut to black. No! <laughs> the end. Was that elevator going down to hell? You know, I didn't think about it that way before, but let's say yes. Seems reasonable. Hell in an elevator. <laughs> living it up while I'm going, going down. down. I'm very bummed. <laughs> um... I wish he hadn't fucked his daughter. I'm upset about it. I mean, he was in a different body. They didn't really know each other. I don't even know that they've ever met. <sighs> I like still... A, I, all I'm saying is like... Here's what I'm it's saying. It's really just the same soul. Sure. What I'm saying is I would rather not... Fuck my soul relatives, my flesh relatives. You probably have already. Fuck! Why would you say that to me? I mean, all our souls are very connected. That's true. I've totally fucked a soul relative. I think all our souls are connected. I would say everyone's a soul relative. Wow. We're all one, Ketrin. My mind's getting blown. Ketrin, we're all one. Uh, How many points did I get? Let's find out. Hey guys, this is Kat and Kim, and we just want to let you know about our brand new Patreon we just launched. You can find us at www.kimandcatstayalive.com. And you'll also find merch on there. Check out our merch store and follow us on social media at KK Sam Podcast. We love you. Bye. Okay. What I get? Out of 28 points, mm-hmm. Dick Porter, <laughs> you received... 16 and a half points. Hey! It's better than open house. There you go. Wow, I really like that. So, happy birthday, Eric. Aww. I hope you like it. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Eric. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> what did you just say? Eric. Oh. <laughs> what did you think I said? Well, there's the point in the song where we say his name. I, I just didn't I know why you were I didn't know we had to sing the whole song. <laughs> well, now we don't. <laughs> It's <laughs> a little I'm, little snippet. I thought we were doing a snippet. <laughs> now we are. Well, I like that movie. I think that might be one that I like go watch. It was fun. Yeah. I I liked it. And I'm really into seeing 
Mickey Rourke and his wife respect. I, I I recommend it. And Lisa Bonet in her. I'm really interested to see how much he actually wears clothes. I bet it's most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> not in my brain, clearly. <laughs> Ooh, it's not how I recall it. That sounds, that sounds fun. I liked it. So anything else? I don't think so. If you guys want to get, we have a thing. If yeah. you guys want to get the a new yearly subscription to Fangoria, you yeah. can use our promo code. code. Promo code. Yeah. KK Sam podcast. And you can get a little discount on their new quarterly magazine that yeah. they're printing. Do it. Woo-hoo. Boop, boop, boop. This has been Kim and Kat's Stay Alive. Maybe. Maybe. So until next time, stay, stay alive. alive. And don't sell your soul to the devil. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Ghosted me. I'm, I'm done. done. <laughs> <laughs>